Hey guys, so today I just wanted to talk about the best strategy right now for investing and beyond. Now, right now I have the chart pulled up here, and I'm using the hike and the she candles just because I think they're the easiest way of visualizing things. So I just have this pretty simple green line here just showing the clear support that we have right now, which is currently in the mid to low 120s. And, you know, occasionally we'll wick down, you know, on some pretty bad news to, you know, the one or the low 110s. But then we get eaten back up pretty quickly. So uh, in terms of playing options, if you want to like try to play options around these levels, it might be a pretty, you know, solid strategy. Um, I've never really consistently tried it just because it's really expensive to play options on Beyond. But yeah, I just wanted to go over the best strategy right now for investing in Beyond. You know, some common mistakes that you can avoid making um, that I've, I've actually made myself in the past. Now, the first piece of advice I would have is never to buy the news pump. I've even made this mistake a couple times, you know, like right here with the Pepsi deal. I FOMO bought at like 190. I bought like, you know, a couple more shares. That was a mistake. It's usually always a mistake to buy on a news pump, guys, um, especially with Beyond, with how manipulated this thing is. Um, for, for whatever reason, the market makers don't want it to, you know, hold its gains. So uh, it, there's usually always a, a pretty big sell-off preceding any, any good news with Beyond. I don't know if it's because they've yet to materialize, you know, um, their profits, actually make any profits off this news yet. You know, people are just kind of getting sick of, like, the you know, the promises, but they want to see some actual delivering, maybe. Whatever the reason, um, you know, I know it's very tempting to want to jump in and uh, and buy the FOMO because you don't want to miss out. But honestly, you, you, you want to wait for the pullback. And actually, right now is a really good time to, to be buying. Um, it's a nice accumulation range. So, um, yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's tip number one. Don't buy into the news. Wait for the sell-off. Tip number two is try to avoid playing earnings calls um, in the near future. Just because Ethan right now, you know, the CEO, you know, I mentioned this multiple times on the channel, and he mentions it multiple times that he's very focused right now on R&D and uh, acquiring more market share. So, you know, for these next few earnings calls, for maybe even potentially the next few years, you know, I, I wouldn't have high hopes for them turning any profits. Their earnings calls are just basically just a huge gamble at this point. Like, I would maybe uh, go in on playing earnings calls, you know, maybe after the McPlant launches or, or, you know, one of these partnerships, you know, with Pepsi or something or KFC finally goes through and we start to see some sales coming in. At that point, I think it might, might be good to play an earnings call. But, you know, until they actually have, you know, some products out there materialized and, you know, ready for consumers to buy from these deals, I, I would still avoid playing earnings calls because... Or you could even go short earnings, but even then, it seems like they're just kind of doing nothing. I think last earnings, they basically, they went up. It was crazy. They went up, you know, on the McDonald's deal, went way down. And then they kind of eventually just settled where they were, you know, around like, I think, 130-ish anyways. So I think both, you know, longs and shorts got screwed on that one. So you don't want to be get caught up in that and then, you know, lose a ton of money because, again, the option premiums are pretty insane. But yeah. That's tip number two. I would just avoid playing earnings calls. It's usually a disaster. They could even beat expectations. It could still go down. Any earnings calls for a company is really risky and uh, generally should probably just be avoided. Now, tip number three would be just stop checking the chart every day, guys. I mean, I'm guilty of it too. We're all guilty of it. But Beyond Meat, if you're invested in it, is a long-term investment. And uh, there's really no use in getting you know all emotional and, uh, and bent out of shape over short-term you know, daily price action, because uh, this is a long-term investment here. It's a long-term view. So you can't really, you know, be obsessing over the short-term price action. I mean, right now, this chart on a technical level looks amazing. You know, I mean, we're just trading in this range. We're consistently bouncing off support. I mean, so even on the technical level, there's really nothing to be worried about here. So just, again, just don't sweat the daily price action. Just dollar cost average. And if you don't know what dollar cost average means, it just means basically just throwing in a certain amount of money like every month no matter what the price is because uh that is usually the best strategy because uh, then you don't end up you know putting down a huge chunk of money on a pump you know something like that you don't get in at a really bad price if you don't have a position right now i think now is the perfect time to start dollar cost averaging or even at these prices it would be a good time to make a pretty pretty solid position because again we're sitting about right around support you know, a little bit above support right now. And again, if, if you're feeling kind of bearish on Beyond still, we do still on a technical level have these gaps here 
that we could potentially fill down here at 100 bucks and around uh, 96 or 95 I believe yeah, right here so I mean these are some gaps that we still could fill you know with any potential um, bad bad news but again we've had some pretty bad news some pretty horrific earnings and I, I can't see it getting much worse I mean who knows uh, with how aggressive you know Ethan is spending money right now things maybe could get ugly enough where we do retest 95 which at that point I'm gonna see this would be a good time to buy a call if we fill this gap that would be an amazing time to buy a call you know just hope that we you know gap back up immediately because uh, these are you know some pretty ridiculously low le low levels right here so uh, anyways guys that's pretty much it when it comes to investing in beyond meat uh, long-term picture dollar cost average avoid earnings for now don't get caught up in the short-term price action and don't buy the news pumps next podcast will be out soon my friend Anthony's gonna try some beyond meat products and I'm gonna interview him i guess on, on what he thought of him so look forward to that i will talk to you guys later